Normally, when we think of a time of war, we've always associated that in the past as as it being a time of unity. And with the war on terrorism, it seems like some have taken that to be a time for debate and illogical rhetoric, I think, would be a good choice of words. I think it's a great choice of words. <clears throat> Let me tell you something, Chris. You know, look at right now, the Democrats are positioning, as I look through the morning headlines, and Dashiell is a CNS article today, and Nancy Pelosi was quoted in some articles yesterday. Um, the Democrats don't even want to vote on a resolution. The president is asking for the war on terror to go to the next step and the removal of Saddam Hussein, and all the president wants is an up or down vote, and he'd like it sooner rather than later, and they want to go on Christmas hiatus before they, they even give the president that. Um, one of the things that emerged, and, and my book's not all about 9-11, it's, it, you know, I, I have a chapter on tax issues, the political wars, the media wars, environmental issues, the, the number one issue in the country I view is education, but the first five uh, chapters I really devote to something that became very uh, ingrained in my consciousness right after 9-11, that the traditional Democratic Party, uh, FDR, uh, Truman, JFK, all of them, these are Democrats, understood the nature of evil and the threat that it posed to liberty and freedom for all of us. And they went out and they did everything they could do to preserve, protect, and defend, and they stood up to that challenge in their time. And we've all benefited because of their understanding and their wisdom and their insight. But a pattern emerges after the late 1960s and 70s, and the greatest example that I've found that most people aren't aware of, three men that would like to be president today, Dashiell, Gephardt, and Gore, while Ronald Reagan is combating the Soviet Union and all their expansionism and all their nuclear weapons pointed at us, and he rightly identifies them as an evil empire and challenges Gorbachev to tear down the wall and pursues SDI and wants to deploy those missiles in Europe, those three men, Dashiell, Gephardt, and Gore, are voting for a nuclear freeze. In the 1990s, the Democrats are proposing to abolish the CIA. After they can't accomplish that, they render the agency impotent. And the pattern is, is that the modern-day left-wing Democrat that wants to be president doesn't understand the nature of, of the threat of evil. In 91, when we had the Persian Gulf conflict, you have this maniacal madman who's used chemical weapons against his own people, uh, annex an entire country, threaten the entire the economy of the entire world by potentially taking over 60% of the world's oil reserves, and 179 Democrats in the House and 82% of Senate Democrats didn't understand the nature of that threat. And I'm saying that their policies are not only wrong, but they're reckless, they're irresponsible, they're dangerous, they make us more vulnerable, they make us more susceptible to future attacks. And they, when I say win the war of liberty over liberalism, I'm saying that those people that have not traditionally gotten it and don't get it today don't deserve to be in power.